All right, everybody, welcome back to our next lab section. Here we are going to be using OpenSSL to do what we did in the last lab. In the last lab, we created certificates for our web service. Okay, we wanted to add SSL to our web service to encrypt our traffic. And we created the certificate from a graphical user interface. Okay, that graphical user interface was the server manager. Remember, that is where we created the certificate. It was a pretty screen that we were able to click a few buttons, create the certificate, and get it approved by the certificate authority. This time, I'm going to log into our machine. This time, we won't do it from that graphical user interface. We are going to do it from the terminal. Okay, this is just another way to do what we did in the previous section. All right, and all of these tasks that we're doing regarding the certificates, this is what your typical system administrators are doing on the job. This is why it's great hands-on practice, and this is why we want and need to make sure we are doing this over and over and over. All right, let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And we're going to be using open SSL. Okay, we are going to be using open SSL. All right, open SSL is just the software. All right, it's a software that we can use for a variety of purposes. Right, but one purpose is to create certificates, public and private keys that we can use for our certificates. So let's type in open SSL version to see what version we're using or what version we have installed, which is 1.1. Okay. Now, before we start creating our public and private keys, all right, we want to create a directory to store them in. So we're going to use the make directory command which is MKDIR, and type in the name of the directory we want to create. It's called keys. If you type LS, you'll see your directory in blue right here. Okay, so let's change directories to the keys folder. And let's run this command here to create our private key. So we're gonna do open SSL RSA. This is the algorithm we want to use, RSA. Be the name of the key. Out. Oh, I'm doing the wrong command. Let's so open SSL. Generate RSA. We're going to create this key. It's going to use 2048 bit key size. Okay, make sure I type this right. Open SSL, generate RSA. And we want to generate it into that key file called corp.515support.com.key. And the key size we want to use is 2048. It has been created. All right, if you want to look at it, hit LS. It's right there. If you want to read what's inside of it, you're going to use the cat command. All right. You can see this is the private key. This is what you want to keep confidential. No one should have access to your private key. All right. We have the private key created. Let's extract the public key from it using OpenSSL, All right? We want to extract the public key out of this file. We want to put it into this file. Why are we able to extract the public key from this private key? Because 
they are key pairs. When you create that private key, you are simultaneously creating a public key. They are key pairs. They work together. Nobody else's public key or private key will work with the public key or private key you've created. They are pairs. If you hit LS, you can see your public key now next to your private key. If you want to read what's in the public key, what command are we going to use? Cat. I'm going to show you a shortcut. If I type in the first few letters of a file I'm trying to open or a location I'm trying to go to and then hit tab, it is going to try and spell the rest out for me. Right? But it, we wanted to spell this one out. It's going to stop here. Right? Until we give it another identifier and hit tab again. Boom. Okay. So open that up. It's just a shortcut that you can use. So we have our public key. We have our private key. Let's go ahead and score it to make sure this is correct. Now let's go ahead and create a certificate or actually request one. All right, we have to request one to be made now. Now let's generate a CSR using OpenSSL. So we're going to do OpenSSL. We are requesting 5.support key. We want this to be corp.5.support.com.csr. Okay, so that looks right. Open SSL. We are requesting a new certificate that is paired to this private key. And we want this request to be the CSR to be stored in this file name here. Hit enter, and now we're going to have to. Now, these are the same things we entered or the same options we entered from the graphical user interface on our on our MS1 server when we did it in the previous lab, when we were requesting the certificates in the previous lab. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter, 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 or services now I'm going with what they have here by the way common name is going to be web server dot corp dot five one five support dot com email address uh, we're not going to enter a password and okay? so you can just hit enter twice Take a look at our CSR. It's right here. Okay, let's confirm that it's there. Great. Let's quickly let's quickly verify. CSR. See, I just hit tab. Open a cell request dash text dash in corp dot five one five. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Dot CSR. Okay. This is our certificate request, and we need to send this to who? Who does this need to be sent to? Who needs to approve it? It needs to get sent to our certificate authority. Okay, in some cases it could be sent to an RA, right? And the RA could send it over to the certificate authority who would eventually approve it. You want to look at what's inside of the CSR. 
I'm gonna hit tab. If I hit tab again, it's gonna show me, it's gonna ask me which file do I wanna look at because they all have similar names. I do dot C, hit tab again. We see the certificate request, but as we mentioned, we need to get this approved. And in order to get it approved, we need to send it over to who? Our certificate authority. But we can't send it in this format. We have to convert it to a PEM file, P-E-M, PEM file. So let's go to the next section, right? All right, in this section, we're actually just going to generate a self-signed certificate. Okay, we're gonna generate a self-signed certificate. So with this command here, open SSL, class dash new key RSA, so zero four eight, that's the key size, out, dot key, that's the private key the type of certificate we want, 509. Remember that's the standard. It will expire in 365 days, that's one year. We want to save it as 505support.com.crt. Okay. We are creating and signing our own certificate here. I'm just filling in the stuff that's right here. Right, that has been created. Let's confirm that. Right, if you wanna look at everything again, hit LS. We have created and signed our own certificate. Here is the certificate here. It has been created, it has been signed. Okay. Now, now let's say we want to export this certificate that we created to our domain controller, our Windows operating system. Well, we can do that, right? We wouldn't just export the certificate. We may want to export the certificate and the private key, right? In order to do this, we would use a program or a tool called PKCS, uh, specifically PKCS number 12. There's another one called number seven, but we would use PKCS to combine or archive the certificate that we created, this, this guy right here, with the key, the private key we created, this lady right here. So we're gonna do that with this command in step one, SSL PKCS12, export it using this name, corp.515support.com corp.515support.com.pfx. All right, that is the file name right here. Key, this is our private key. Forgot the dash. I'm gonna hit control E to go to the end of the line. Dash in, corp. Dot CRT. Okay, I think that's right. If it's wrong, I'll get an error message. And we're not going to enter a password. And okay, we could enter a password. Best practice is, especially when you're migrating this PFX file from one location to the next. Why? Because we have our private key in here. And you want to make sure that we're keeping it as secure as possible. So what are we doing here, y'all? We are, we want to migrate our public, our, our certificate, this public certificate 
right here and our private key over to our certificate authority. Okay, and the way we do that is by archiving them together into a PFX file. Okay, and how do we do that? We use PKCS number 12. All right, this is an archival tool that stores both the certificate and the private key together so we can migrate it from one place to another, specifically from here to our domain controller or our certificate authority. So let's hit next. All right, let's go to the comprehensive question. I think mine are already answered. So I apologize about that. Which of the following is the file extension for certificate request files? We know that's the .csr. This is what we created or what we use to create our certificates sign and request. Why is it necessary to merge or convert certificate file types? Because Windows CAs issue certificates in a different format than Windows servers use the certificates. And finally, what is the certificate file extension commonly used by Windows servers? This is the .pfx, okay? This is why we use PKCS number 12 to convert our certificate and keys over to a .pfx format. All right, y'all, if you enjoyed this lab, if you got a better understanding of how certificates work from a terminal perspective, right? And from a Linux perspective and migrating them over to Windows, please give this video a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comment section. We will see you on the next lab.